Thanks you for joining us this morning as we ask the question, was Jesus really in the tomb for three days? I count, some people count two, otherwise known as one, a two, a 16. Yes. <laughs> Did they count it wrong? Somebody, some weird math going on here. When you look at it, you might get a little confused saying, okay, well, what's, what's really happening? Well, I'll tell you in a nutshell, right off the bat is that it's a cultural difference on how counting and rounding and everything like that goes. And it's basically is no surprise. If you, if, if someone says, Oh, this is a gotcha. Jesus was only in the tomb for two days. Therefore you Christians are totally wrong. Do you really think they would have made such a stupid mistake like that right off the bat? I mean, if we're counting to some fractional number, I mean, if we're doing pi, and they're off on the, the, the 15th digit in, into pi. Okay, maybe there's some issues there, but not this. This is really basic. So we're going to go over what it is. And it actually, when I started digging into it, it got a little bit more complicated than I thought. I'm, I'm really scratching my head trying to trying to go through this. So before I get started, I want to want to go over a little bit about how different cultures think about time. In many African cultures and some Asian cultures, there's off, uh, time is often determined by the occurrence of certain things happening, like uh, communal gatherings or ceremonies or agricultural activities. We used to, even in Western culture, we used to look at certain seasons and to say, okay, it's a hunter's moon or there's a um, it, even astrological um, counting by, by, by astronomy or astrology basically saying when certain events were happening. And um, by that, then they were saying, okay, it's now time to plant. It's now a season for this. Before exact timekeeping devices and what uh, Western culture also kept time by the position of the sun. Noon was when the sun was at its zenith, not so much when we set our clock. If you had somebody from the early 1800s, 1700s or so forth, Try, time travel into our time and, and say, oh, I'll meet you by noon. And we're way on one side of a time zone. And he's there waiting for like half an hour or so for us to show up because he's saying, hey, it's it's noon. And we're saying, no, it's not. According to my clock, it's at my watch. It's not. In Madagascar, there's this there's this one culture. This is this is kind of interesting. Uh, the Malagasy people, they they view time uh they view the future differently that we're walking backwards in time and the reason for this is you say what these guys kind of nuts do they think that time goes backwards no that's not it it's it's a matter of perception because we can see the present we can see the past but we don't see the future so as we walk into the future it comes into view and i thought well that's kind of a cool way to look at it yeah so so there's different ways of, of viewing time and then counting it. We, we're so precise. Um, I work with data acquisition, and we, it, we can get it down to the millisecond. And in some things, we had to work with, with instrumentation to get it down to the microseconds. Hmm. And you can't even count on uh, PC operating systems to do that because there's so much variance in lag uh, things get interrupted all the time. You have to use a real-time operating system to make sure you're down to the, the closest microsecond. And anything below that, now you have to be on the chip level and program a chip. If you have an FPGA, you can field programmable gate array. You can control that down to the nanosecond and have that do some time. I just went way over the top on tech. Most of our, uh, for most of our head. <laughs> Sorry, but there, there's a point. We can be so precise on these things. And when we look at the Bible, we expect in our ways, uh, uh, the way that we view time, we expect the exact same thing to be done. And uh, there, was a, there was a pastor that had gone to, I believe it was an Asian church, pastor, a missionary. He showed up and says, well, what time is your service? And they gave him a word that he wasn't familiar with. And he was thinking, well, it's at like nine o'clock, 10 o'clock. And they said, no, it's 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 such and such. And then he figured out that it actually meant when it got warm enough. <laughs> when it got warm enough. That's yeah, when I'm people sure. started gathering. And uh, so, you know, if, if you had written 
the Bible, if the Bible was written in that type of culture, you'd have to have that translated in, in a way that we can understand. And, and we're like, it doesn't fit. Why doesn't it work the way I expect it to? And uh, so even like we said, noon, noon would be different in the U.S. and different towns across the U.S. up until the mid 1800s. Because every town would have its, okay, it's noon, so that's where they set the clock, and they have the clock tower in their own, and everybody would would synchronize according to their own time. So in Philadelphia, you'd have one time, in New York, you'd have another time, and that was all good until so the railroad. The railroad, that's that was right. Great until we had to actually work together. That's it, and and having that, because otherwise, you know, well, wh what time is it going to arrive? It, well, it takes like uh, an hour and 45 minutes for the train to get from point A to point B in both these towns. But they'll both have their own time, so we can't really regulate. It's got to be done this, that plus a telegraph, and that linked us all in to, to, to have at least the, the times down. Yeah, once so, we started getting basically instantaneous communication and high-speed travel. Yeah. So, well, so now we started having issues with trains crashing each other. Yes. Each other because whoop. Yeah. Whoopsie. Yeah. So because of the modern age and the internet, we can say, well, the Western culture. Well, not it's not that. It's 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 communicating in a way differently now than what we had in in uh 150, 200 years ago. So yeah, things are different. So we want to take a look at did they count wrong? In what way were this done? Uh, I don't know who this monk was. This was a Photoshop of some uh, guy off the internet and just uh, cranked him in. I thought he looked particularly befuddled by trying to count the number of days that Jesus was in the tomb. So how long was Jesus in the tomb? What does the Bible say? Let's take a look at it first from, from what the Bible says. Uh, Jesus answered them saying, destroy this temple and I will raise it again in three days. Well, what did he mean by this? Let's look a, look a little bit at the context a little bit. The Jews were responding to him. What sign can you show us to prove your authority to do all this? And Jesus answered them, destroy this temple, and I will raise it again in three days. And, of course, to them, they're thinking this, this is the, the, the greatest monument that they have right there. And this is... It, it, the the temple was was a, a point of cultural identity. They had gotten their land. They're they're they have been invaded. They're oppressed by the Romans, but they're allowed some freedom. And this is really a huge a point of identity for them. They could have this, and it's beautiful. Herod's temple. It was gorgeous, and it meant more than just uh, like rebuilding. Uh, the two towers that have come down that, that what is it? Uh, tower one, I forget the name of it, but the, the, the talking about the trade towers, yeah, yeah, the World Trade Center, yeah, rebuilding that, or even if we had uh, the Capitol, if, if Washington DC, the, the Capitol Mall was destroyed and we had rebuilt it, that'd be that'd be significant to us, but for them, it's even more significant because it was a religious and cultural center for them, and it had taken a lot. A lot of money, a lot of time, a lot of effort to, to pull this together and build it. And Jesus said, destroy the temple and I will build it again in three days. And then they replied saying, it has taken 46 years for us to build this temple and you're going to raise it in three days. But the, the temple he had spoken of was his body. And after he had raised from the dead, his disciples recalled what he had said. And they believe the scriptures and the words that he said. So this passage right here in John, he's talking about three days. All right. Was there something else that was written there in the scripture? And the answer is yes. In Matthew chapter 12, then some of the scribes and Pharisees told Jesus, teacher, we want to see a sign from you. But he replied to them, an evil and adulterous generation craves a sign. Yet no sign will be given to it except for the prophet Jonah. Because as Jonah was in the stomach of the sea creature for three days and three nights, the Son of Man will be in the heart of the earth for three days and three nights. And then in Mark, he says, He began to teach them that the Son of Man must suffer many things and be rejected by the elders, the chief priests, and the teachers of the law, and he must be killed and after three days rise again. So this is pretty straightforward. Three days. In Luke, 
He said to them, this is what I told you while I was still with you. Everyone must, everything must be fulfilled and written about me in the law of Moses. Then he opened their minds that they could understand the scripture. He taught them, this is what was written. The Messiah will suffer and rise from the dead on the third day. A little bit different there on the third day and repentance and forgiveness and sins will be preached in that all uh in his name to all nations beginning in jerusalem so this is i want to take a look a little bit here about what it means with three days and three nights and being what it what does it really mean to say that what is a day if we've spent three days are we talking about 24 hours? Are we talking about three days then being three times 24, 72 hours? Because if that's the case, Friday just before sunset to sometime before dawn on, on um, Jesus rose from the dead because an alarm went off and he got up because he forgot to silence his phone. He got up a little bit early. Instead of three days, it was two. No. So it was at exactly 72 hours that we're talking about. Now, remember, we want to see precision. I'm an engineer, and I want to see, okay, what was the exact milliseconds that he rose from the grave? You know, how precise was this? So then would it be down to the hour? Would it be down to the minute, second, or microsecond? If not that precise, then general between 48 and 72 hours. That's how we would divide the days up. So how long was he in the tomb? When does this day start? So I'll ask you this question. When does a day start? It should be easy. We're talking about our own culture here. Oh, our own culture? Okay, yes. midnight. Midnight. Midnight to right before midnight. Now, you can imagine how hard this would be for someone who does not have a precise timekeeping device, like a watch or a clock, to say precise, the nearest minute. So how would they know? You can tell when noon is because the sun is pretty much, it's at its apex, right? It's, it's right up there at the top. But midnight's a little bit harder. Now, you can Why tell. harder? You can tell by, uh, I believe it's either the Greeks or the uh, Egyptians were able to tell when midnight was at the very latest by 600 a uh, BC by looking at the stars and calculating where, where by using Polaris as a center point to say where things were. And I'm sure the people were able to do it long before then. So you actually can tell where the midpoint is, but it's not as easy as, right? So you can... Another way to tell that's more precise for most people, instead of trying to calculate where the stars are, is when the sun rises and when the sun sets. Yeah, that'd be the easiest one. Right. Oh, look, it, the sun is there. So that is what they were doing for determining when, in the Hebrew, in ancient, he, in, in the ancient Hebrew mindset, Middle East, Near East, I should say, that's when they did that. And you look at Genesis, God called the light day, and the darkness he called night, and there was evening, and there was morning the first day. So do you want to take a guess on when the day started for them? Sunrise. Sunset. 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 Oh. Yeah, 50 so 50. 50-50. If you look at it, it says here, and there's more examples than just this, but this is probably the, the most straightforward. And there was evening, and there was morning the first day. So it goes by evening. And then it goes forward from there. And we're going to, in a little bit, we're going to talk about exactly, well, how do you know when evening actually starts? Because, you know, there's a whole twilight thing that goes on there. Speaking of twilight, <laughs> little plug coming up. Okay, if you don't save for the rest of the video, I want to tell you there is another uh, video coming out soon that we're going to be talking about. And this is another Skeptic Zone video. When is that? I waited for you to take a drink to just ask when, me this question. When oh, is that yeah. being released? Perfect timing. <laughs> when it's at noon EST. Eastern so. Standard Time. We're talking precision here on this one. Right. Of when it gets out. That's when the first one 
premieres. <laughs> and in order to understand what I'm talking about, you'll have to see it. That's it's right. a bit of a different video. Yeah. And and so we had the Council of Servia, uh, Absurdia that we did talking about um, how there's a lot of misconceptions concerning the the Council of Nicaea and and things it, things are just blamed on the Council of Nicaea left and right and and also with with Constantine. So now Constantine's got a bad rap. He does have a bad rap. And so now we are taking a look also at um, the Easter to say what well a lot of people are accusing well it's just pagan just rebranded paganism. Well, uh, is it really? And we'll take a look at that with with both the video tonight that's coming out and it's going to be a special video being do you want to say anything about the anything it's else a choose about? your own adventure so choose your own adventure which is pretty cool so figure out how that works because it took me a while to get it right <laughs> <laughs> so there's a little bit of hyperlinking involved in this and you can be interactive with the video and it was a lot of fun to put together and while i have at the end of today uh pre presentation today i've got a screenshot of, of the people that were involved we have twice as many people involved in this skit than then the last one, it's longer. It's about I, I, three times. If you watch all of them, it's about three times longer than the first. I, I don't think it's boring either. I mean, we we uh, there's there's some good humor in there. There's there's some intrigue, and uh, nobody nobody died in the making of this video. So you do have that out of there. Uh, and then Thursday, we're going to take a look at that video and pull it apart and say, okay, these are the accusations that are made. What do we have supporting this? Accusations being. Easter was just from this certain pagan ritual. This is this crept in. This is where eggs are from. This is, you know, so on and so forth. And we'll say, go back and take a look. That's not really the case. So that's going to be fun too. Next, that's in two days. We're going to be doing that. So I'm going to take a look at some of the comments here. Uh, Damian Kuzmich said, because the Pharisees make humans uh, to serve the Sabbath because that, that Jesus says, Sabbath for humans, not vice versa. Jesus' body die in great uh, in Great Friday, and Jesus' flesh rise on Resurrection Sunday. Yep, that's that is when it when it happened, and then it's a matter of counting it after that. Uh, Christ's opportunity died. Said uh, this argument just comes from a failed understanding of Passover. Oh. I'm not sure what you mean by that. Jesus, uh, the uh, definitely um, the Last Supper was a Passover supper. And Jesus said, this is my body and blood, referencing himself as the Passover lamb that was going to be sacrificed. Um, and then... Uh, Okay, I think they were getting a discussion here. I'm just looking at some of the some of the uh, the discussion going back and forth in the comments. Um, <clears throat> okay, I'm going to put this last one up here. Um, sorry, I mm -hmm. that's a safe that's a safe uh, safe decision. Yes, yeah, you should yes. not. Ali Dawa is not a good source for Christian or Muslim theology. Yeah, I think it was here. Thomas um, Zakarnaik has used the understanding of Noah of not dying inside the fish as evidence against Jesus' death. Islamist argument. Uh, you mentioned that throws out the window. I, I see. So he's saying since Jesus said, hey, look, this is a sign you're going to get. <laughs> Never mind the whole, I'm giving you guys an actual sign when Muhammad's like, no, you guys are too doggone lazy. I'm not giving you any miracles. No, don't you ask me for miracles. No, look, I'll split the moon. There you go. Um, so, yeah, I can see where he's saying, hey, no, since Jonah did not die in the whale, then Jesus obviously didn't die here either. The problem is you got to ignore quite a bit of the gospel in order to get that to fit. And right. So he said over and over again, this is what I got to do. Yes. As well as the whole concept of sacri sacrifice. Having sacrifices done. 
Right. Yeah. It, it is, Islamic theology, of course, they're going to gravitate toward that. First of all, they don't believe that Jesus died on the cross, so they're going to say that. Second of all, they have no concept of the sacrificial system in the Old Testament. Uh, Muhammad must not have gotten the memo on that one because he doesn't have under, any understanding of that. And that is central to um, the atonement that's in the Old Testament about how we are, how we can have restored relationship with God. The, the whole thing, it just, it's like they were totally blind to that part of the Old Testament. I remember having a Muslim tell me that uh, we do the same thing as the Jews. We have the, you know, the, we have halal, they have kosher, everything's exactly the same, same festivals and holidays. Said, no, no, not the same festivals, not the same holidays. No. Ramadan's completely unique, although allegedly it's supposed to be the same time that the Torah and the gospel were revealed as well. So that was supposed to be a consistent thing. And of course, all good Muslims, because it's a pillar of Islam, must do fasting during that month. Yeah. Including Jesus, right? Because he's supposed to be a Muslim. And no. No, there's no mention that whatsoever. Uh, the New Testament is completely in line with the Old Testament. If they were both corrupted, they happen to be both corrupted together independently in the same way in the exactly the same way which it itself would be very very difficult to do i don't i don't know how you could do that so what else did what else did he say then in scripture but on the first day the first week early at dawn they went to the tomb and the spices had been prepared and they found the stone rolled away from the tomb but when G when they went in they did not find the body of our lord jesus so this is talking about when, when he was crucified and buried, it had to, they had to prepare his body before sunset because that's when the Sabbath day began, was on sunset. So Friday evening before sunset, so it was still the day on Friday, he was buried during the day. And then all night, and then the next on Monday, uh, excuse me, Sunday morning, they came to the tomb and at, at dawn, and he was was resurrected at that time. He was no longer in the tomb. So those are that's the frame on both sides that we're going to be working with them. So let's look at how that lines up. If you got Friday, the crucifixion, that's day one, day two in the tomb, day three, resurrection. But if we look at when the days and the nights were, and the, the, doing the, the three days like this is good, but let's look at when the uh, the days are. So we're looking at day one, Friday. You got the, the very end of the day, he's in the tomb because they bury him before midnight or before sunset. Day two, he's there all day, and he resurrects before day three. So if you remember what, what Matthew said, three days and three nights. How were the three days here? It doesn't seem to add up. How about the nights? Looking at the nights, we have um, the first night spanning Friday to Saturday, the second night spanning Saturday to Sunday. So two days. Two days and two nights in the tomb, not three days and three nights. Well, that doesn't look like it adds up. When God created time, he first created the night and the day. Therefore, Jewish calendar day begins with the night beforehand, while the day in the secular calendar begins and ends at midnight. A Jewish day goes from nightfall to nightfall. Shabbat begins on Friday. And this is according to a Jewish website. I'm not using a, a Christian website for this. I'm using a Jewish website. This is, this is their thinking, their mentality for that. So if we were to look at um, the calendar, again, it's going to show a little bit different. Sunset is defined as, and this is what I was talking about earlier. This is the interesting part about how, how do you know when, when sunset comes? How do you know when sunrise comes? Sunset is defined as nightfall when there are at least three stars spotted in the sky. This begins the new day. Well, somebody's got better eyesight than someone else. But generally speaking, we're not talking milliseconds here. We're not talking seconds. Generally speaking, when you see the, the, that happen, 
that's when the, the next day begins. And sunrise is determined as a moment when one can recognize a familiar face. Again, somewhat amb amb ambiguous, but this is a culture before they had exact timekeeping pieces. So if you look at this chart, if you can see it, it starts with uh, the, the day and the night. And they counted the number of hours starting uh, for, the, for the day at, at sunrise. Now, day here meaning time of light, not 24-hour period. This is 12-hour period. Starting with um, sunrise, you have um, the three hours up until 9 a.m. That would be the third hour. 12 p.m. noon would be the sixth hour. 3 p.m. would be the ninth hour. And 6 p.m. would be the twelfth hour. And the same thing in the evening. So sometimes when you hear in the Bible talking about on the fifth hour, the, the sixth hour, and so forth, this is the this is the type of timekeeping device, this dial is what they would be referring to. Starting at sunrise and ending at sunset for the 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 daylight time and the night time would be it would be the opposite, both using 12 hours. Uh, Technical difficulties. I just lost everything. Here, I'll give this to you to kind of go. I think you have to exit. There you go. Thank you very much. Okay. The old and infirm need help with technology. Oh my gosh. I was doing computers in the 1970s. How do you get this DOS thing to work again? Um, so let's let's look at this again. We we looked at, at this first uh, setup being from an from an, a Western viewpoint where it starts at midnight as being the first day. But now we're going to be looking at it from a Jewish standpoint where the night, the day begins at sunset. So taking a closer look at it, then we have um, where are the days and the nights falling? Well, during the day here, crucifixion actually started more in the evening because during the trial and everything like that, that, that takes place and it ends during the day on uh, Friday, the, the, the first day. And then you have Saturday, or excuse me, um, yeah, Saturday evening being day two. So, so when the sun sets on Friday, that starts day two. Goes all the way through Sunday during the daytime. And then sunset on Saturday is day three. So we have basically these, these all set up. So now we're starting to count more like the, the Jewish mindset is. Here is the key. That's part of it. And there's another part to it, too, where it comes in is when does the day end? We talk about and it's considered partial day is considered a full day. One hour past two days rounds up to three days. They didn't round to the nearest. They rounded up. So if you have two days plus an hour, that's three days. This is where... Um, I'm going to give an example for how they would think differently about the counting the days that we did. And he said, sir, remember how that imposter said, this is after Jesus' death, the, the, the Pharisees are talking to the Romans. They're trying to get them involved in this and say, listen, we need to, we need to make sure this, this grave is secure. We don't want grape robbing going on. Sir, we remember how that imposter said, while well, he was still alive, after three days I will rise, and therefore... Uh, Therefore, order the tomb to be made secure until the third day. Lest his disciples steam away and tell the people he had risen from the dead and the last fraud will be worse than the first. Okay, so this is the key. If you look at it, it says, after three days, I will rise. After. And then they said, secure it until the third day. In other words, when Sunday morning comes comes along, you don't need to secure the tomb anymore. Just secure it until Sunday morning. You have to have the guards there. That's all. 
it, that's on the third day because they're thinking about the after and on the after starts at the beginning of that day not when it's completed but at the beginning of it if you look at the wording here and this is not the only example there's other examples so they thought of days differently just the start is enough for it to happen so if you have the start of sunday that's sufficient and when did sunday start sunset on saturday so that was the third day so wait a minute matthew said that it was both um the day and the night three days and three nights we don't have that complete on each one. So is, is the phrase a day and a night an idiom? And the answer is yes. Then some of the Pharisees, this is where this is, I'm just looking at the last part of this here. It says, so the son of man will be in the hearts of the earth for three days and three nights. This is Matthew. We've already read this before. Three days and three nights. So this is the last one where it's a little bit of a stumbling block to say it wasn't quite three days and three nights. Being in the belly of the whale. The fish. I love this picture. This Swim gives you faster. <laughs> this gives you an idea of how far and how fast to go. And and so for three days and three nights meant by that time, not after that time. This is how this is how their their thinking is going with this. That it's not um at at the end of it, it's at the beginning. They're counting. Just like in some cultures, you have going back, walking back into the future. Mm -hmm. I'm walking backwards. It, this is it's a different type of thinking with the time as I'm starting at the beginning, as long as I have the first bit. Okay, so is there really any evidence of this that they, they actually thought this way? And the answer is yes. There's This is in the Talmud. The Jerusalem Talmud states, uh, the tradition is that Rabbi Eliezer ben Azariah said a day and a night make an ona, and part of an ona is at the whole. This is the, the one of their words for- As a whole. As, at, the whole. At, as the whole. So even a part of it is sufficient to make the whole thing. You get a partial, that's enough. You count forward. Now, we even do this a little bit with, uh, with our time. When we talk about centuries, we're in the 21st century. Oh, that's even, always been confusing. Yeah, it is a little confusing, right? You we're in the subtract one from it. You, you're we're first in the century. Oh, that's zero to one hundred AD. That, that's right. So, so you don't have the zero century. The the first when you when you it, we're counting by tens, right? Mm -hmm. That was the first century, and after the actually on the year two thousand, we started the twenty first century. Even though our calendar says two zero, we're counting yeah, it as two first. one, because we're working up to that. Yeah, it is confusing. Some people really, really flip that because, but this is how they did it on this. So we can say that just as we say the 21st century for them, this was the third day he rose from the dead. And even though Matthew said it was a day and a night, it was an idiom to say, we're talking about these 24 hour periods instead of just uh, a daytime. It is, it is this period that is happening. And we know that Matthew is good at counting because kind of tax collector. He was a kind tax collector. Job. Yes. I was talking to uh, uh Christ Opportunity God before the before the uh, live stream and uh he was he mentioned the same thing that both fishermen and tax collectors would know how to count. Uh yeah, they would have to because that's part of their livelihood. Yeah. I I wonder yeah. if if Matthew had gotten his taxes wrong with the with the Roman Romans, uh, would that be a death sentence for him if he got his taxes wrong? Well, as long as he, well, it would be a shakedown, I think. If he got too little, if he got too much, who cares? I mean, and the Romans aren't going to complain if you gave him too much money. So it's only one way that would have been punishable. Right. So let's take a look at this, this graphic again and fill in the days and the nights, knowing that you're rounding now, that that's how they thought. They did a rounding on it, just like we do with centuries. They did with days. And so the first day would have been Friday, second day, Saturday, third day, resurrection day on, on Sunday. So that's pretty much it. 
that that wraps it up to say that this is how it all came together. I'm going to look at uh, the chat, see if you guys, I want to see what your comments were with this. And if you followed with this at all, if there's any questions regarding it. Um, uh, okay. So, okay, there we go. Let me see about uh, this one here. So that's why I get some annoyed Christians. That's why I get annoyed at some Christians saying that we should throw out Old Testament without, without it. You lose the thread of the story. Absolutely, there's sure, like removing the foundation from a house. Oh no, the house is fine. Now there are some parts of the, the Old foundation. Testament that have been fulfilled. You have the Old Testament Mosaic Covenant. You have the the the, the law that was given, and there are. Uh, you can basically boil the law down into three different types. You had civil, religious, and and moral laws. So the civil laws would be like, well, if I killed your oxen, uh, I owe you 30 pieces of silver, for example. Okay, so that's a civil suit. That was a, just like we have civil and criminal law. They had civil, uh, religious, and, and uh, moral laws. Um, an example of a religious law would be that you do a burnt offering like this. You 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 prepare the the offering this way. You present it this way. You take care of it afterwards uh, by this other method. So that is a religious law. Then you have the moral laws like uh, obey your mother and father, no killing and things, uh, no adultery and so forth. So that's the moral law. So if you look back and say, okay, now they. So the, what did Jesus fulfill in that? Well, his sacrifice fulfilled everything of the law, but we are still required to keep the moral law. And it's summed up in two things, love your neighbor as yourself and love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. But the moral parts are still there. No adultery. You can't, you can't justify yourself in saying, well, Jesus paid for my penalty. He paid for my sins. I can go ahead and do whatever I want. Or, geez, you know, those 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 laws about adultery don't apply to me. Yeah, they still do. There still is that part that applies. Um, and then Thomas also said, sunrise, when you recognize an acquaintance, that gives a new twist to Mary not recognizing Jesus at first. That could be. He also had, had his disciples he was walking with when he was going to uh, uh, Emmaus. Um, and they didn't recognize, and that was full blown day. So, what is it about the resurrected body that you're like? I'm going to keep my identity hidden from you. Um, and then, uh, yeah. So, good, good eye for detail. Um, Mary recognized Jesus after sunrise. Thomas uh, added this. I don't know how true it is, but I heard that Jewish tax collectors were grifters. They paid the Romans to get their position in order to skim money off the top. Uh, Matthew's sins were greater than just treason. The, yeah. Yes. Yeah. The, the yeah. answer is, I don't know if they paid, paid a bribe to it, but that's how they were paid by the Romans. The Romans says, we want this cut from the people. You can take off the top for your pay. I don't care. You do what you want. So you're right. They would, I can imagine them being really hated people, twice treasonous, right? You're not only working with the people that are that are occupying our country, you're 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 cheating me you're skimming off the top yeah so let's see so matthew's position he would have had to have been decent and pretty good at math right to not get in trouble at the same time he's talking to the romans as well as all the common folk in his area so he was definitely bilingual <laughs> going yeah. back to the common statement by muslims saying that the gospels couldn't possibly be written by the disciples of jesus because they were written in greek right and i did i have uh gone back and forth with one guy uh recently saying that um you know there's there's where maybe john didn't know greek as well but if you look at it his writings both both the gospel and his letters um he knew it fairly well. Peter might have been the one that had struggled with it more. And then Luke was more uh, a translator for him. But they all were familiar with the area. And I do it in this video right here. We talk about what language Jesus' disciples speak. Of course, you're in a live stream. You don't see the video. It'll come out later. 
And I, th- I think one of the most powerful ones, at least in my mind, indicating that they were most likely all bilingual, if not more, knowing more languages than just two, um, <clears throat> is the sign that was nailed above Jesus. Hmm. Because again, you had three languages on there. And if, according to the Muslim claim, if they could only read and write Aramaic, that wasn't on the sign. So it what languages What up. languages were on the sign? Hebrew, Latin, and... Was it Greek? Greek. Hebrew, Latin, Greek. Yep. Okay. So... Those were the three. So I don't know if I would actually... I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to push back a little bit. Um that may have not been so much the latin part may not have been so much for the jewish people he had a lot of roman soldiers around there too. oh no 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 so, I, th- I think the sign was for the people in the area my point would be if like the muslim claim that they only knew aramaic that sign would have been nonsense to them correct because they wouldn't be able to read it so i would assume that they could at least read one of those three languages would have been common enough place for everyone there to understand. Yes. yes. And again, it wasn't it wasn't like that was supposed to be a kind thing to Jesus' followers. No, it wasn't. That was intended as an insult. Right. So if the Romans wanted it as an insult, they'd make sure you could understand their insult. Yes. I do want to put one more thing up here as we wrap this up. And that is, I want to show... Oh, before I do that, sorry about that. Uh, this is... This is the a graphic that I use partially for the presentation here. And I want to give a shout out to Wesley Huff. I've used his graphics before. I do not have it now, but I will put a link in his in his uh, in the description to his site and to his graphics. This is one of many that he has here. And I think he did a fantastic job with representing this, showing the different divisions of the day and night in the Hebrew uh, time scale in their their clock their their measurement of days uh this was good and then also a shout out to not a shout out but a, a more of a uh a preview of what's to come so i grabbed this this picture this is a group shot for doing the skit and it was it, it was well done we have emperor constantine there in the center uh it was very difficult to get him to do the skit um, not only did we have to resurrect him, but we had to do the whole mummy, you know, revitalization thing to get him there, teach him how to speak English, get him to do this presentation, and then get him back in the grave afterwards. The guy didn't want to go back. I don't know why. But anyway, we have him, Rod Serling. We have uh, Brother Thaddeus and uh, Sister um, <laughs> Mother Inferior Mary Sue here as well as as us two, Ignoramus and Pompous here in the group. And it was really good putting this all together. I am looking so forward to uh, this get being revealed, as well as all the the issues that we're going to be going over with saying that Easter was just rebranded paganism. And we're going to go over that. We're going to show how, in, in mockery, this whole skit is done in mockery of that idea, not of the church, not of history, but a mockery of the skeptics. Remember, this is the skeptic zone, just like the Twilight Zone, how things have been twisted, and we go from there. So really looking forward to this. It's going to be fantastic. This comes out tonight Today. at, what's that, what time? Noon. Noon! Wow, okay. Noon. I someone, thought it was has been, someone has been Listen, too much studying, we, too deep in studying different I, ways. Hebrew time here. Time. Hebrew time here. So I, I'm a It'll little be bit the different. same in Hebrew. Okay, it's a time zone difference then, okay? It's the same time zone. Yeah, well, I'm in I'm in a, a Jerusalem time, so it's like six hours ahead or something. So we're we're it'll be noon, short, very short from here. That presentation, and this is a hyperlinked or a what would you call that? Interactive? Interactive story that you will be able to participate in and help develop. Yes. You get to choose which way, which direction this goes in it. And then come two days from now, we're going to analyze this. Say where are all the problems? Where are all these, these ideas, these pagan thoughts coming from? And is, is Easter actually pagan or not? So um, really looking forward to that. And taking a look at any last comments here. 
Uh, that is a good question in which I will not answer. You, you're not going to answer that I'm one? I'm not going to answer that one. Uh, that is left up to your imagination. Maybe she she will reveal that sometime. You Maybe know, you're gonna leave we'll that up. Out. To, leave that I'm up not to her. Gonna, I'm not or them. I'm not going to let you know which sister is going to reveal that. That's the question. Yeah, well, I don't the know. question is the entire time were they like switching on and off on the videos? Maybe that's why she gets so many videos out. You know, like, <sighs> that would explain so off. much. I don't know. That's right. Does she have glasses taken off? She's like Superwoman, and then puts her glasses on, and she's L. Is that how it works? Or is that with just Clark with Kent? You? Superman. Yes. Well, Clark Kent, Superman. No, brother ignorance. <laughs> <laughs> and we will see you today at noon when that is released. Till then, enjoy your time.